We all understand the type of climate that we're dealing with. We're dealing with multiple offer situations. You know, I'd love to know sort of what's your why? What what, what makes you tick? Why are you so successful? Uh, in and your- have a dialogue with your lawyer. Have a dialogue with your agent. Both sort of passionate about sort of what we do. Again, vet your agent to make sure that they're experienced have- and they're local. I like that idea. No excuse to miss it on no Saturdays ex- from 8 to 9. <laughs> That's right. WBZ. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. Normally, if uh, as I've gone through it, and I've established a scope of work, if I'm at the same scope of work as the insurance company or the, the claim, I'm going to be within 5% of their number, so that's an easy negotiation to come to terms with. Right. If there's a giant differential between my number and their number. There's a differential in the scope, and at that point, it's let's get together and see what did I carry that you didn't or vice versa. What are you carrying that I didn't because I might be even lower than the insurance number. No. I can get there when the adjuster is going to come out, and do you want us there, then, then that's fine. Uh, sometimes, uh, like let's say it's a, a water claim, and uh, there's a lot of uh, wet sheetrock and things that have to be demolished. But they're going to run moisture tests and things like that. We don't know what that demolition scope is until they're done. So it's too early for us to come in and measure out what's the putback. Mm-hmm. So we might go over it with the adjuster on what's the anticipated scope of work. Then we, we come back and, and do what we do and put the numbers together. But they should leave- I think in any uh, construction or renovation type situation, it's, it's similar. The difference here is that you've had an event that's right. caused a project to now be necessary as opposed to you've decided to renovate your kitchen or put an addition on your house or something along those lines. So now it's still a construction event. Mm-hmm. So um, there are companies out there that will do the what I call the, the water remediation. They'll, they'll suck up the water. They'll pull out the stuff. They'll do the mold remediation if that's appropriate, things along that nature. Mm-hmm. Some of them will also sell themselves as a one-stop shop. And because they're already working in this, sometimes people say it's just easy enough to stay with those guys because they did a good job on what they do. Right. But that's why would you just hand work out? without bidding it out. So if the scope of work is established, you can get the claim from the from the insurance adjuster without the prices in it. So it just has the scopes and the quantities. You can give that to several contractors and have them price it up. So be competitive with the with the with the contracting like you would if you were bidding out a, a kitchen renovation. Don't rush into it. Now Start the process as soon as possible. You- how uh, was the activity in 2014? I know, I know, we all complain about low inventories and whatnot, but overall activity. What's what? Yeah, what was your experience? We were very fortunate, and I think again, it goes. It, it all goes back to your agent base, uh, and the reality is that uh, we probably didn't come fall off uh, very far off the mark from 2013. Th- 2013 was our best year ever. Nice uh, billion dollars in sales volume. Wow! And if you think about the number of agents, that's a per per- person productivity that's pretty much off the charts. Right? Where's the next spot in Boston or in and around Boston that you think is hot? Uh, and you were here, and what did you say when you were here? I said East Boston. Right. East and, Boston. And were you right? I think I was. Yeah. If you look at the numbers, East Boston is on fire. Uh, it, I considered that the next Brooklyn. I call that the next Brooklyn yeah. for uh, Boston. Tell uh, us a little bit about it. What are you seeing as far as um, inventory and prices and appreciations? Give us a 10000 Appreciation level. is really ex- accelerating in East Boston right now. Uh, it's almost... I, I like to see it in a good price point where everybody can kind of share in the in the benefit, but it's moving very quickly. You know, multifamilies are going off the charts. Condominiums are out there. I mean, there's one for a million dollars, I believe, in East Boston right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it will sell. That's that's yet to be seen. But the bottom line is the price points have have risen drastically over the last year. The reality is that the the draw to Cambridge for us was the uh, opportunity to be able to impact the Somerville, the Arlington the Belmont marketplace. I think with your, the green line is going to impact Somerville extremely well, right. and it already has. And Somerville is a very hot market, but it's going to get even hotter. Gotcha. Uh, Arlington's going to be the benefit of the Cambridge marketplace, which is, you know, three minutes of inventory. People have right. to be somewhere, and that's a contiguous market. Absolutely. And Belmont is just an, a luxury marketplace that I think is going to, you're going to see change quite drastically as well as we move forward. So Cambridge for us was a strategic move that we think we're going to follow the Follow the marketplace. For so. those listeners, Belmont, Cambridge, Somerville, and Arlington. So those are the three hot spots for next year. So we'll keep an eye on that. What's your thought on Medford? Medford's going to be a benefit as well. The assembly uh, square has been great. that's going on is going to cause Medford to... But I, I wanted to save that for 2016. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Well, let, actually, let me blow your mind then, Ollie. Yeah. You're going to like this. I like Please it. Please blow his uh, mind. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Rick asked me to do this before yes. we started. I'm Great. very sorry. Thanks. No, um, actually, we have an agent who was doing uh, helping a client buy an investment property, and mm-hmm. they were looking in Cambridge, they were looking in Boston, and they literally never saw the million dollar property that wow. they purchased, and they were able to do everything remotely. And tell us with some of the tools that were employed in that transaction. So in a transaction like that, you're using everything from Google Hangouts is a great example where you're able to actually have, in some ways, a face-to-face appointment with someone who is in another country, another time zone. Um, wow. so that's one. Um, sometimes people will do things like using FaceTime. So the, yeah. if you have an iPhone, you can actually broadcast essentially from any given location. So they could walk from room to room and point things out. Sure. And, um, and then, you know, using a program, uh, there are a number of them out there, Dot Loop, DocuSign, which allow you to do a paperless transaction. So, um, and then they have to hire professionals who understand how to do it. So gentlemen right. like yourselves, you understand that, you know, there are certain aspects of that kind of transaction to be a little more careful about, but right. yeah. It's Absolutely doable. And actually, you you guys, I'm sure you find this in your business as well, that um, you don't actually compete with people in your business because you're doing it differently. Right. And yes. people are drawn to what you're doing and how you're doing it. And so in many cases, what I'm trying to get the agents to do is to play to their own strengths, hmm. to understand their unique value proposition. Um, and, and everybody has one. So it might be that uh, someone has an interior design degree, and therefore they're able to walk into a property and say, geez, if we make these few changes for very little money or no money, we can actually yield you a higher sale price and get this property sold more quickly. Yeah. Or you're shortening the marketing time that it takes for their listings to sell. You're shortening the time period for them to be able to w- set expectations and goals for their buyers so they can be after those short, small inventory type scenarios and get their offers accepted. Absolutely. Absolutely.